Hey guys, I'm here with a quick review and unpacking of the Anatomy custom sketchbook. I'll be starting with a quick unboxing followed by a process video of this little spring themed portrait I did in the first page of the book. And here's a juicy close up for you guys. This is the box that the sketchbook came in. It was very securely packaged and came in its own little box within a box. As you can see, the packaging is very pleasant looking and I like the overall aesthetic. It comes with a big fold-out calendar, which personally I don't really have any use for, but it's a nice touch. This box is double-sided and as you can see, it has little instructions on the side that allow you to turn it into something like a storage for the book once it's finished, which I thought is pretty neat. I don't know if I'm actually going to use it or not, but it's a really nice idea to keep the sketchbook safe once it's been completely filled out. I really like the little gold accents on the sketchbook. It's really nice looking. I, I like it a lot. As you can see, there's a bunch of pages in the front that come included in the sketchbook. I actually later went and took a bunch of them out because I didn't really see any use for them myself, but they're all like really, really nice and I can see how other people could really use them. I especially like the map, that's one of the things that I kept in. There's a handy little chart of paper sizes on the other side of the map and there are some stickers as well which I don't think I want to use. So right here is where the custom section begins and I decided to put a section for project planning uh, before the watercolor pages because I thought it would be pretty unique to be able to plan things out in the sketchbook as well as have drawings in it. I really like how they included this little sample page where it shows you how to use the actual chart because admittedly to me it was a little bit unclear <laughs> looking at it at first glance so it's really nice of them to include a guide. One thing I will say is that the planning section was a little bit smaller than I expected it to be. I would probably use like twice as much, if not more, pages. I think there was like eight pages or something like that. But moving on, the watercolor pages are quite nice. They're very thick, so I don't anticipate any um, warping or anything like that. And the back of the sketchbook has a nice little pocket to use. So I found out about the sketchbook through targeted Instagram advertising, which unfortunately works all too well on me most of the time. What caught my eye about this sketchbook is that it is a customizable one where you could choose pretty much all the components. So they have sketchbooks and planners as well. There's a ton of different modules to choose from and I thought it was a great idea because personally Especially when it comes to planners, one of the things that really annoyed me is that there's a ton of stuff that they come with that I either don't need or they're missing some key things that I would like, which is why I'm really, really into bullet journaling because it allows me to kind of just customize and cater to my specific needs. So when it comes to a sketchbook, it's a really cool idea to be able to put other things in it, I thought, and as well choose different types of paper because, you know, obviously as you guys know, sketchbooks come with one type of paper and I thought this was a very interesting thing that I wanted to try out. And here is the storage box that is the inside out box that it came in. It took me actually forever to be able to fold it properly, but anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the process of the first illustration in the sketchbook. Okay, so I'm just jumping straight into the sketching. The idea was to aesthetically match the page on the left hand side and to go with a the spring theme inspired by some photos I saw of uh, cherry blossoms on Instagram. I wanted to draw my character Noel, and I kind of just had this idea in mind that this would be some sort of makeup campaign because she's a model. Uh, as far as I know, this is not going to change about her character, but anyways, that was kind of like the little story behind of what I had in mind while drawing it. So I was going for like a 
you know, one of those poses that just really shows off the face where I could spend a lot of time on drawing in the makeup once I'm past the sketching phase of this drawing. I wanted to show you guys the entire process of the sketch from start to finish so you can see how I go about doing it and what parts I focus on, etc. Usually the first thing I do is, especially when I'm working with kind of like a constrained <clears throat> space, like a sketchbook page, is I will plan out where the illustration is going to go. So. I will like usually center it somehow and we'll do a bunch of rough guidelines to help me kind of place all the elements that I'm going to put in in a way that works within the constraints of the page. I remember when I was younger like one of the most frustrating things was I would spontaneously start drawing something and then I wouldn't really start it off as something I would expect to turn into a full illustration but I would get really into it and then I'll realize that it's like in the corner of the freaking page and I can't continue drawing the body if I wanted to, etc. So at some point I just learned it the hard way to really pay attention to where you're starting the drawing on the page. I know this is like noob advice, but I don't know. There's always people, I guess, who could find it useful. So I figured I'd just mention that. <clears throat> so as you can see, I focus quite a bit on the face, which is usually the most important part of my illustrations generally speaking I find it to be the most difficult which is why that's where most of my time is spent as you can see you probably actually can't really see it because the lights are the lines are so light that I put down in the beginning but I do have kind of like a rough outline for where I want most of the elements to be like the hair um, so the hair is really straightforward to me it's not anything that requires like a lot of thoughts or gets complicated so I usually just leave it till later. Yeah so for this illustration I kind of decided to not ink it or not do any outlines because my standard process is usually doing like a standard sketch and then inking the entire image with like either a pen or like a micron or something like that and then moving on to coloring afterwards but I found that I used it for so many years and it was kind of constricting and lately I've just been wanting to experiment with removing the really divided step-by-step -step process that I've been using for so many years and to kind of leave more room for more experimentation so for this drawing I decided to just use a pencil and take it much further than I normally would with just pencil. The lips took me quite a few tries to get correct, but I really tend to put a lot of importance on the facial expression. Like, obviously, I love to draw faces that are pretty, but more than that, I like to convey some sort of emotion. It's never anything that I specifically could describe to you guys, but I usually try to avoid things that are too bland, like just a smile or like some sort of absent-minded happiness. I like to put something like, something a little bit mysterious in the character's face, like there's a little bit of sadness in there, usually even if the character is smiling, that's something I like a lot. Um, I think it definitely adds a lot of interest to the illustration in the end, and plus since I was drawing one of my own characters, I do kind of know like what her background is, how she feels about things, so it's interesting for me to think about that sort of thing while I'm drawing because I tend to not think too much about the actual lines that I'm putting down, so yeah. Uh, as you can see, I decided to add some shading. It's also something I don't generally do, but it was uh, just a, an experimentation, experimental, <laughs> experimental decision. And here's where I start to put in some detail into the hair. Um, I really love drawing hair, it's definitely one of my favorite things. I like to put a lot of flow into it to capture like a sort of sense of movement. Kind of like ocean waves is a huge uh, point of inspiration for me in drawing hair. I don't ever think about it in a realistic way. I treat it more like a design 
element that I can just bend whichever way to make it look nice rather than anything that's realistic or, you know, fathomable or whatever. And in this part, I'm putting in some tree branches to, like I was planning to follow the whole spring theme. So I wanted to draw some flowers in and as you can see, I'm also putting in the branches to kind of echo the movement of the hair. I'm drinking this really weird green tea that I've had in, a, in my cupboard forever that is like a ginger seaweed green tea. I thought it sounded pretty gross, but I wanted to try it. It's not too bad, but it is really, really weird. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm a little bit sick right now, so excuse my voice. I gotta clear my throat here and there. So here, I'm pretty much almost done with the sketch. I've put in some rough um, outlines for where I want to put the blossoms and just kind of putting in some finishing touches. One thing I wanted to note is sometimes near the end or generally I like to hold a pencil in the sideways type of way. Um, I think it it's hard to explain but as you can see it gives like this slightly different wispy effect and I like to use it to reinforce like a soft type of feel and it's really also handy for shading large <clears throat> or filling in I guess large portions of the drawing so that's something you guys should keep in mind if you ever wanted to try using this technique and here I'm just basically outlining the last little bits and I'm already thinking of how I'm going to approach the coloring stage of this drawing. So here it is, close up. I really like how the face turned out. I think it has like a really soft grace to it. As you will see later though, um, it's not quite what the um, painting ended up looking like. It's almost like this is her without any makeup on, and then as I add in color, I'm giving her like this full makeover. But here I'm just placing the stuff that I'll be using for the rest of the drawing process. I usually have two jars of water, and I decided to throw in some more experimental stuff and use this little sticker pack that I have. Um, it's got these cute little holographic stars that I wanted to put on her face and in her hair a little bit. It's just a really cool thing. I thought, you know, I really love stickers and have always collected them and hoarded them like a crazy person ever since I was very little. I still have a ton and I used to be like super precious about those things and being like, well, I don't want to use them because that's wasteful and I would just like take them out once in a while and just look through them and then put them back into the secret box. But it never even occurred to me that I could use stickers in drawing, which is crazy now that I think about it because it would have been so fun if I actually did this through my high school years or something. The whole theme for me and doing personal artwork these days is kind of to try to loosen up and try to break out of all the like really strictly established process steps that I've kind of gathered for myself over the years. It's really good to have an established process. Don't get me wrong, it's something that I value a lot. Definitely it helps me complete drawing after drawing, but I think I've gotten to the point where it's a little bit stale, so I decided to mix things up. And as you can see here, these are some brushes that I'm using. They are actually brushes that were sent to me by a company called Betty Hayway. Betty Hayways. Um, and I love these brushes. I've used them a bunch of times already and I'm now finally putting them into a video so I can talk about them a little bit. They're excellent. They're actually synthetic, which is great because they retain their shape for much longer. I mean, I don't really... Like, I definitely notice a difference between synthetic and natural brushes, but these are perfect. Like, I wouldn't really see why I'd need to use anything over these. 
Uh, they've been great so far, and I really like how they look aesthetically. Obviously, they pretty much match anything that I draw, especially these days. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend them, and I will use uh, I will include a link in the description where you guys can check them out. So as you can see, the first thing I'm doing here is putting down some basic lighting on the face, I guess. I, I really like to work from light to dark when it comes to watercolor, which I think is the standard approach. I'm also kind of testing how the paint would go on top of the stickers, which seems to be fine. I like to blend out the watercolors with some water after putting them down, which is also probably a very standard practice. I don't really know what to say about the process too much at this point because I gotta be honest, it's very, very autopilot for me, especially when I start to render. Like, I would consider this rendering, I guess, where I'm just kind of not thinking about anything and I'm completely zoned out for this portion usually. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think here I'm just mixing some green to start putting in the leaves and things. Kind of went very freeform on this, didn't want to do anything too detailed, just some dabs of color, which I think was a very good way to go. And I'm so, so glad that I didn't ink this drawing. I think it really adds such a nice airy feel to it because the lines can be so heavy and really weighed down. So I definitely want to go with this process a lot more often now. Here I'm just painting in the flowers, which are about the same color as her skin, which is something I didn't even notice while I was drawing. The skin is very pink, but I don't know, somehow it just seemed to work. Sometimes I go through Pinterest to look for inspiration, and I saw a post somewhere where it called this color like a dusty rose, which I thought sounded so nice and attractive to me. So I kind of was uh, trying to mix that sort of color because as you can see I put in a little bit of gray in there just to um, Just to knock down the saturation of the pink and I think it really created this lovely color That I kind of just used throughout this drawing. It's very monochromatic. I love simple color schemes with just one or two colors I think it's very easy to use them, which is why I prefer them, but they're very nice to look at and kind of just fun, a lot more fun for me and a lot more cohesive than uh, trying to go full color. I really like how the painting worked in this stage. Uh, I'm showing you guys a little close up because here I'm doing the eyes. I made a spontaneous decision um, to put some blue into her eyes. I think Noelle is actually supposed to have light brown eyes from what I can remember, but I mean these days who cares and also like no one cares what this character is anyway because it's just a decorative drawing. The background and character thing is mostly for just for me to give it some context and to have something to think about while I draw it. But yeah, I really like the effect that it gave, um, putting some blue into the green. Created like a really pretty eye color. And here I'm just mixing some more paint to give the hair another wash to kind of make it, <clears throat> to just kind of solidify the shape. Mm. This tea is pretty gross, but it's really making my throat feel better. I've had this nasty cough for the past few days. It sucks, because I never even really go out, but I somehow still manage to catch it. So now I am ready to move into some line work. Um, I guess it's not quite finishing touches yet, but as you can see, I'm using this brush pen to draw in the branches. This brush pen is quite used, so it gives like a really cool effect. It's not, it doesn't bleed too much. 
<clears throat> I really like it when um, brush pens are, or like inking pens are at the end of their life because they act a little bit more like pencils around that time and it's honestly like one of the best tools to use I think. It's too bad that you just have to like waste all the ink in order to get to that point and then eventually they run out and you can't use them anymore. It's kind of a short window of, window of time for that but I think this gray worked really well with the drawing. It, it's dark enough to create ample contrast but it wasn't super harsh and black and you know honestly <laughs> this is like putting on makeup on her face at this point and it's very similar to how I put on makeup as well. I don't like to use black eyeliner either. I use usually like a dark brown or something and so this is pretty cool how like I personally really love makeup and I put a lot of effort into learning how to do it correctly I guess and it's really interesting how I do think it, it kind of transfers into my art and when I draw faces as well. So here I'm kind of going back to the pencil now to just add some more, <clears throat> I guess, dark in certain areas to increase the contrast around the face and to make the face pop a little more. I really like layering different materials. I seldom stick to just one. So I feel like it's super liberating not to stick to one material. I've always loved mixed media for that reason. And now I decided to use a black pen just to add some extra depth. And uh, the reason why I decided to use a pen is because I get the most control with it. Mm, I guess I could have used a pencil as well, but I couldn't really find anything that would match color-wise. So I just decided to go with a pen. At this point, the drawing is pretty much almost done, and I hope that you guys found my explanation useful. I tried to talk more, a lot more about the process and my decision making that goes into it. Even though it was pretty spontaneous, obviously I still planned it out, and yeah, at this point it's pretty much done. I could have probably stopped, but I decided to just accentuate the lips a little more. And then I remember thinking that they look kind of gray, so I decided to go back in and add some more paint after I was done with the pen. Honestly, I can get out of control when I'm with a pen because it's so precise and I zone out so much that I can just honestly go over every little thing and just keep rendering into the abyss. So it's important to kind of look back at some point and just stop because I think this drawing came dangerously close to being overworked. And I'm really glad that I left the outer areas kind of wispy and not entirely finished looking, which is also something that I think really adds to the overall appeal to an illustration and it's something I've struggled for many years to be able to do because usually I would just go really hard into trying to make every single area of the drawing look finished, if that makes any sense. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to find a balance because the drawing should still kind of look finished even if it's not necessarily detailed all the way throughout, but it's something that you can probably... it's just a personal call you make and I don't know, at the end of the day, just draw whatever makes you happy, and if you pronounce it finished, then it is so. I decided to put in some details with a red pen too in the hair, and I did not use a black one, obviously, because I just wanted to retain the nice and soft look. And here I'm just finishing up the drawing by putting in the last branch in the background. My overall thoughts on the sketchbooks are that it is great, I love it, the paper seemed perfect, I believe this was the cold press paper, so it didn't have a whole lot of texture, or hot press, I don't know, god, I always mix them up. Anyways, um, whichever one, <laughs> I'll probably just put some text over it when I'm done, but 
yeah, I love the sketchbook. I would definitely recommend it. It's great that you can put in whatever components you want. And I'm very happy with how it feels. And it's very good quality. The paper is great. And I absolutely recommend it. Check out the link below in the description. And thank you for watching my video. Bye! Thank you.